of New Carlisle City Council to order, June 3rd, 2019, p.m. Okay, Mrs. Summer. Barner. Mm. Acting Mayor Lindsay. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Five members present. Do you stand for the invitation by Chris Shammy? For our heads, please. Lord, I would like to throw some more prayers out. I ask you to throw some more prayers out for the victims from the uh, recent tornadoes. Uh, just devastating, I would say. Uh, please pray for them. Show guidance. Uh, pray for the first responders uh, and everybody, you know, the police. I like to say uh, throw a prayer out for our city and our staff. In your name, amen. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What's that? Uh, action on the minutes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cook? Yes. Acting Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Minutes accepted 5 0. Communications. We'll now swear in the, our newly elected councilwoman, um, Becky McKenzie. If you'd come forward, please. Long time Mrs. Time. Berner, if you would do the honors. Mm -hmm. Becky's in the turquoise teal. Where would you like us to stand? Right up front, it would be great. You can get right there as long as you face the camera. <laughs> Your report, sir. Yes, I'm going to move it on with the city manager report. <laughs> uh, new building updates. I have attached a draft layout of the second draft that we have. It's uh, first page is the first floor. The second page is the second floor, and I will stress these are just drafts. I did want to share them at this point in time. Uh, we did meet up there, Mr. Lindsay, how long ago was that? A couple weeks ago? Yeah. And reviewed the first draft, so our little committee came back together, and this is what he came out. At this point in time, I would like to share it with the other council members in public. I would, would like to request a work session to go over this. Um, I know that I, later on I will be going through and doing a, uh, I'm sorry, the clerk of council will be requesting a special meeting on the 19th uh, for the vacant council seat interviews. Um, I don't know how council wants to do that, but I would like a work session to go over the building plan. So I don't know if you want to kind of piggyback on the 19th and do one evening, opposed to having two separate special meetings over the course of the next two weeks. I personally don't have a problem doing it on the 19th. Council would like to do that. 
What time are council interviews going to start? Probably seven. I would think seven. That's usually when we do them. So if we started the meeting at six and gave us about an hour to go through that would it. Depend on your schedule. Tom? And this is McKenzie's schedule. <laughs> so six o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Everybody good with six? On the nineteenth. On the nineteenth, sir. Okay. Can we call for that? Um, make it official. Pardon me, sir. Does she need to make, call a vote for it to make it official? Make a motion to have a. Uh, Work session at six o'clock on the ni June nineteenth, two thousand. Uh, Mr. Cobb, it's actually uh, would be to go over interview uh, to interview applicants and to discuss the uh, uh, and interviews and dis dis discuss the uh, plans for the building. <laughs> and the work session for the plans would be six p.m. and the interviews would be begin at seven. Okay. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Acting Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted 6-0. Thank you. And moving on with the city manager report, our 2019 Memorial Day walk is in the books. Uh, it was an absolutely fantastic event this year. I'm going to get a, a hats off to all the city employees who work tirelessly to get the city ready for that event. It takes a lot of man hours, especially in that cemetery. The cemetery looked fantastic this year. So those in attendance, I, I thank you personally for that. And um, again, it was a, a great event. I will be sending out thank you letters. Um, and again, thank you to all the participants who did participate. Upcoming legislation, I will have a employee new hire policy to city council, as well as a cemetery plot buyback policy. Uh, we'll actually be amending some of our existing codes. Um, parks and Rec bylaws, um, I did give peop some certain people a call on that. I did at the last meeting state that that would be ready for resolution this meeting. I do need to rewrite that because I actually need to write that into our codes and I failed to do that. So that is going to be delayed one meeting and it will be on resolution at the next meeting. And also attached, I need a, mo a motion to approve Kathy Wright to Parks and Recreation Board. Her application is attached. Council. Mr. Mayor. Sir? Make, make the motion that we accept uh, Kathy. Kathy Wright. Yeah. Kathy Wright on the Parks and Recreation Board. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Uh, Mr. Lowry. Okay. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Acting Mayor Lindsay. <coughs> yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. That is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Longs are nice. Council? I'd like to make a motion that would break rules of council to entertain a nominations for mayor. Second. Mr. Cook? Yes. Acting Mayor Lindsay? <coughs> no. Mr. Shammy? No. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Motion passes four to two. Does that not require two thirds uh, majority? <coughs> Which would be five votes, I believe? Two thirds of four. Would it be two thirds of present? Yes, sir. Okay, well, two thirds of six is four. Okay. Motion passed. Mr. Cook. I'd like to open those motions then, and I'll nominate Mr. Mike Lowry for mayor. Second. Mrs. Burner. Mr. Cook. Yes. Acting Mayor Lindsay? No. Mr. Shammy? No. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. 
motion passes four to two. Thank you. Will you administer the oath to Mr. Larry? I can do that. Comments from the members of public, please try to keep it around near close to five minutes if possible. Peggy Eccleston, 312 South Main Street. And I just want to thank Deputy Allender for her help. They had a deputy sitting at Hensley Park on Tuesday after the last meeting. And in less than 24 hours, I saw seven cars pulled over. And they have been parking down there, and traffic has slowed down considerably. And it's amazing how much less noise there is when the cars are actually going the speed limit instead of 10, 15, 20 miles over. But thank you very much. Hopefully it continues. Ms. Adler, is that something you're, you're heading up, or is it a couple of the deputies? Yeah, it's a couple. After the last council meeting, I sent an email out to everybody. So uh, I think, um, you know, everybody tries to do anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes per shift sitting out there. And whether it's actually running radar or just being stationary to be seen while they complete a report or do a phone call, um, I just think the presence itself has mm -hmm. really helped slow people down. Um, I was telling her that, you know, I stopped one the day before yesterday doing 48 and 25. So um, they, they are definitely hightailing it through there. So hopefully the continued presence will, the word will get out and it's going to slow down a little bit. Thank you very much. My name is John Kraybacher, 307 North Henry Street. Um, I've been with the Brother Disaster Ministry now for several years and gone all over the country. And we're currently in Dayton, uh, helping out in Dayton. And one of the questions that I have is, if something like that happens here, do we have a plan? Like an emergency preparedness plan? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably he, completely outdated. Well, he's raising he's very honest with you. Yeah. Good. In that situation, the county would take over? We have a countywide uh, disaster preparedness program with, um, to include the strike force teams and would also and would turn over to uh, county EMA. Plus, also, we have a countywide net that we can switch to where everybody's on the same net and the same channel. Okay. Well, we're, uh, we're dealing a lot with Harrison Township, mm -hmm. and this is going to be televised out to, anyway. <laughs> and they're not very good at, at their plan. So, I, you know, 
I would advise it, uh, you know, to look at that because of all the tornadoes that have been coming into this area, un, you know, unprecedented. Sure. So something neat, especially if our water suddenly, you know, stops, our electricity is turned off. You know, uh, who is it that that will get the electricity on first? You know, that was one thing. You know, uh, I was dealing with a lady today with um, who her well, she has oxygen. You know, and she had a the one of those new machines. You know, and mm -hmm. you know, and actually, she got her electricity on before anybody else. But he, she got a generator first. Sure, things like that. And you're right. I mean, a lot of these municipalities take for granted what plans they have, and a lot of them do get updated. And I'm sure Harrison Township has their own, but then they follow off Montgomery County, like Chief said. We have one backup at the county, but I'm almost per, per certain that we have one for the city itself. We definitely have one for the water. It's called our water contingency plan. That back goes out. We have a backup for that, and it tells exactly what we do. It's at my house. I go to it. I have my role. Um, but as far as that tornado or natural disaster stuff, it's something that we should probably look at as a community and find out how we want to move forward with it. Exactly. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Craig Walker. Anyone else? Any comments or questions? Linda Eggleston, Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street. I'd like to ask a question because when Whatever siren warning system went off in New Carlisle, it is not audible in south part of town at all. Um, and I guess I'd like somebody to address that in terms of awareness. I do not watch TV, so I have no clue unless there's some other outside warning. The other thing that I would like to bring up is in anticipation of the election, I was reading the charter. I had nothing better to do since I don't watch TV. Um, there are no, there are no requirements or addressing of replacement of the mayor in the charter. This is, not the first thing that we've brought up about the charter that needs to be addressed. And I would like to <clears throat> encourage the council to reconsider doing an early charter revision and taking care of these problems sooner rather than later. Thank you. Mr. Collins, Mr. Mayor, there were people over on Funston that did not hear the siren. A few of my neighbors were standing out in the center street. We couldn't hear it. Do we have a, the old siren down here by the church? Is that working on that tower? It's at the pool and it's at Willowwood Park. Yeah. But I hate to be the bearer because every time we discuss this in a council meeting, people kind of get upset. But it's tornado sirens are not meant for people inside their house. It's point blank that simple. They are geared for people who are outside to seek shelter. So that is a common misconception with warning systems. They think if I'm in my house watching TV, I should be able to hear, hear the siren over, and that is not the point of them. Um, well, I had some, uh, another citizen come up today, said someone outside couldn't hear them. Um, we're on the south side of town at the city building, and I hear them every Monday when they get tested. So I think people need to understand that they're not meant, I don't want to reiterate myself, they're not meant for people inside. I mean, it's, they're not. They are meant for people who are outside to seek shelter indoors. I spoke to Mr. Kirk about it, and uh, you know he had the same concerns on the south side of town. I think you'd said, um, you know, I, I think what did we spend on those? Do you remember? I think they were around twenty-five thousand dollars each, weren't they? We'll have to look, but they're not cheap. Yeah, I know they're not cheap. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's what I was explaining to him. That's why I think the one by the pool was put there because obviously people are outside the pool and they're all and also. Are our stationary or they rotate around the pole? They, they rotate. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's, it rotates. As it rotates. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. The uh, thing about these uh, tornado sirens, air raid sirens, whatever they call them, <laughs> they work off of a radio or off of a, a wave, sound wave, and it bounces. So the people on Henry may hear it, but the people over on the court there by Mr. Cobb may not hear it because it may bounce over them. But the ones on Washington will hear it. 
So it just depends on where you live and how that wave bounces. And also the wind will affect that wave, how it bounces. The, uh, I don't know, yes sir, Chief. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thought you wanted to interject, I'll let you. Uh, talking to Mr. Bridge, tornado sirens are great for what they're meant for, like Mr. Bridge said, for outside. Um, I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that most everybody has a cell phone. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> sign up for the code red. You're going to get a code red alert on your phone way before the tornado sirens go off. The code red sirens uh, alerts go out quicker, they're more complete, they give you better information, and you can have it set up to where you not only get it on your phone, you can also get it on your computer, you can get it in different ways. They're a lot more reliable, and they're a lot more uh, quicker than what uh, the tornado sirens are. Our tornado sirens are set up to where they, are, they can be set off by Clark County Dispatch, but they also are set up to be set off by uh, the National Weather Service. They can set them off from there. But still, the same thing. In a tornado event like that, with as quickly and as, th as things happen and progress, the tornado sirens themselves can be taken out. That or it could have been too late. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I strongly suggest that if you have a phone, cell phone, please sign up for what the, it's called Code Red. And you'll not only get tornado siren and tornado alerts for that, you also get the uh, severe thunderstorms warnings. Uh, any type of event that is in that area, whether it be a weather event or a national disaster or anything, they'll, they put them out over the code red. And I strongly suggest that people look at those before they worry about the tornado sirens. Mr. Cobb, you had a comment? Chief Presley, it was uh, roughly 10 to 12 minutes before the phone system went to work. The sirens had already went off. Mine didn't. Mine, Mine went off. Well, I'm just telling you, we were standing right there, and 10 minutes, 12 minutes after the siren went off, the phones went off. Yeah, mine went berserk too. Yeah, the hyperreach system is one that I think is widely used the most. I think the, the code red system is, is the most widely used, and it can be like I said, it's used for a lot of different things. Amber alerts. alerts. It's set up uh, like Deputy Allen said. It's set up for amber alerts. It can also be set up for um, uh, like for the schools if they have a, a lockdown situation. They can also be set up to send out for that also. Chief, do you think, I mean, you, I would say you're probably the most qualified one to possibly at least put some insight on this. Do you think that it would be beneficial to add a third siren if the finance is allowed? That's, that's your guys' call. Okay. I, I, you know, because you also have to understand that those sirens are also set off by a repeater system that's at the Scarf Tower. It's a VHF repeater. And that's what sets them off, and it has to be set off by a radio wave. How long do you think before they stop using them all together and rely on cell phone notification? I don't think it's going to be long. I really don't. That's something you have to take um, consideration. There's like talk about getting rid of the tornado sirens and using more. You know, and, and also, too, another fallacy that they found out with with a tornado siren, especially when you have a lot of communities that are close together, um, when you take Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Huber Heights, Dayton, um, Tip City. You can live in Huber and be hearing Wright Pat sirens. Mm -hmm. And it gives a false mm -hmm. alert. You can be living in Huber Heights and hear uh, tips sometimes, depending on where you're at in Huber Heights, with as much as Huber Heights has expanded. So a lot of times, because I know my wife was at home, I was in the city, um, she was hearing sirens at 9 o'clock at night, that night. And so she was getting either the reverb off of uh, Right, Pat, because the federal government works in a different way than what the states and the counties do. If there is anything within two nautical miles of the base that has any type of rotation, they sit off the base of tornado sirens. And 
those sirens, they have several humpes and it bleeds out into the towns. So there's a lot of false alerts that happen with those. That's the reason a lot of, a lot of communities, a lot of towns aren't putting that money out for them. I'd probably have to agree with Mr. Lindsay too. I'll bet you could probably have a situation where you're on the same block and one may one may hear it, one may not, depending on like you said, the wind or I hear them all the time. Or the you know, the trees or whatever it may be. So thank you, Chief. Did I, I, that there, Mr. The the wave from whichever one I'm hearing, it, it hits right on top of my house, evidently, because every time it goes off, especially Monday first Monday of the month at ten AM. I can hear it, whether I'm inside or outside, no matter where I'm at, I hear that siren go off. Mm -hmm. I don't hear a whole lot in my house, but I do hear that. Right. But, you know, I get alerts from three different channels on my phone, so you can get them from the TV stations also. Mm -hmm. right. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Sir, any other comments? Anybody else any questions or comments before we move on? All right, thank you. All right, move on. Uh, comments from uh, committee reports on the night. We'll go to resolutions. Yeah. I will have Howie and do some research on the cost if council has a. Just that curiosity yeah, would sure, be nice. No problem. All right, resolutions this evening. Resolution 19 09 R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution amending the city of New Carlisle rules of council. No motion. Resolution dies for lack of motion. Ordinances. This evening we have ordinance 19-10, public hearing and action tonight. And ordinance amending and repealing ordinance 17-14. Council. So move. Oh, explanation to this ordinance, uh, sorry. This is the first step of amending the rules of council for proclamation since how the proclamations were uh, issued, uh, detailed in ordinance 1714, that one needs to be amended first. Once this one is completely effective, which would be around probably the first meeting in July, that resolution that they just let die will come back so they can vote on that. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Council, any questions or comments on this? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. This ordinance has always, I mean, the uh, proclamations has always been the sole responsibility of the office of the mayor. Regardless of who the mayor is, they should retain that authority. Uh, I know the previous mayor has done one or two that council did not like and I don't believe we should be restricting the mayor's ability to do what his job or that office in my mind requires and it's also legal that that is his pretty much his sole responsibility to do so I don't know why this council or any council would want to to restrict Mayor Lowry from issuing a proclamation. And I don't know of any city in this state that does that, that restricts the mayor's ability to not issue proclamations he so desires. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, sir. Council, any other questions or comments? <clears throat> okay, I'll just chime in on this real quick. Um, and, and I agree with what you say you know, that it is the mayor's responsibility. And, um, you know, I think this was started up because it wasn't that, and this is just my opinion, I'm not speaking for anyone else on council, but I don't think it was the fact that the previous mayor was giving proclamations we didn't like. I think it was, it was giving proclamations that nobody knew anything about. Um, for example, we just learned that he'd given a key to the city to Mike DeWine that I hadn't, that I didn't know anything about. I don't know if anybody else knew about. Um, I read it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I, did, I didn't know about it until he sent his email out. But anyways, um, I, I, I'm not going to support this just for the fact that I don't see, a, you know, a proclamation should be done unless there's a, if, if you're giving a proclamation to a group, an organization, a person, a business, whatever it may be, 
me personally, I think it should be done in this building or what, wherever we're doing our council meetings at for public record. So it's on that camera, it's in the minutes, so that you know, 100 years down the road, they can, you know, the next generation of Dave McGorders can, can post a, you know, a photo of uh, someone's proclamation who had a business on the corner of you know, whatever street it may be, just so it's in the record. I mean, because I, I think if it's not being put on the record, then it, they are kind of getting cheated out of the whole experience as, as a whole. So, um, you know, I, I know in past mayors before, you know, before me, before Mr. Reynolds and, and so on, I, I don't ever remember it really being an issue. So I think if council can just kind of, you know, agree that we're going to try and make sure that we do these, you know, in a fair and upfront, honest way, and not, not necessarily honest, but just that, you know, unless there's a reason it calls for it not to be in, in here in the council meeting, like, um, I can't think of anything exactly, you know, maybe the person can't come or it's a really special grand opening of a building that really needs to be promoted, a brand new structure or something, then yes, do it on site. But uh, I just think it's best to do it here so it's on record for years and years to come. So I, I, I'm, I'm not going to support this, me personally. I think we can move forward without it. I agree with you. I don't want to overset my boundaries, but do you mind if I just maybe give a synopsis of what Ordinance 1714 says to the audience so they have an understanding of what you guys are trying to amend? Yes, sir. It basically restricts that. It says that the mayor can issue proclamations. However, what it does is restrict what the mayor can give proclamations for. And I think that was the contestant of, of council with the past mayor was they didn't agree with the giving for. And it says that no proclamations will be issued for matters of political controversy, ideological or religious beliefs individual conviction, events, or organizations with no direct relationship to the city of New Carlisle or for campaigns or events contrary to city policies. So the existing ordinance that's on file now heavily regulates what type of proclamations that can be given. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cook. I believe in supporting this. <laughs> it is the fact that council as the whole yes, sir. Yes, sir. needs to be apprised of any proclamations that are going to be given out. I think we all have known of several that have happened. And consequently, I believe council was blindsided. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like being cornered out here on the street corner by one of the citizens saying, what about Oregon proclamation so-and-so? What are you talking about? Well, you were voted in to represent the citizens. Yes. And you don't know anything about it? Nope. That's the reason for this ordinance. Yeah, did we do um, it, The first was Mr. Cook, Cook. and the second Shammy. was Shammy. Thank you. Start with Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. Mayor Lowry. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion passes five to one. Moving on, Ordinance 19-11, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on June 17th, 2019, and Ordinance Authorizing the City Manager to proceed with an annexation petition to the Board of Clark County Commissioners pertaining to 21.43 acres. Would you like me to read other business? Yes, please, other business. Okay. Moving on to other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. 
The Crime Watch meeting will take place Wednesday, June 12th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. The flag burning ceremony will take place Friday, June 14th at the American Legion. Um, more information to come. 2019 Community Garage Sale will take place June 22nd and 23rd. Mm -hmm. A big boom thank you too will take place on June 29th with the rain out date of June 30th. More information to come. Um, motion to approve for our special meeting on June 19th for council open seat interviews. We already did that earlier, so we will have a work session starting at 6 p.m. and then 7 p.m. interviews will take place, correct? Mm -hmm. And executive session, we have none. Thank you, Ms. Burner. So we're, I'm just going to jump back on something. Whatever. The big boom, thank you, too, is just more or less a sequel. And, you know, Mr. Cook and Mr. Cobb's sequels never usually live up to the original, so. This one will, I have a feeling. <laughs> That's the If it doesn't, I'm just going to point the blame at you, too. I got big shoulders. Perfect. Perfect. Do you want to share the banner? Yeah. Uh, seriously, though, thank you, Mr. Cook and Mr. Cobb. You guys have been working on that, so. I'd like to show the banner that was made to be set up there at the uh, ballpark. While, he, while he's doing that, can I expand upon one thing? Yes, sir. I don't know how many of you remember Mr. Claire Miller. Mr. Miller was clerk of council here for a number of years. He also served on the fire division for a number of years. He is undergoing some severe health problems. And what I would like to do with the auspice of city manager, we would like to send to Claire well wishes, some prayers, cards to get well, and those can be sent to P.O. Box 419, care of the city of Nicolau, if you will. We will then forward those on to him. Um, I won't go into the details of his health, but uh, it's it's going to be a traumatic situation, I'm sure. So anything that we can do in order to help Claire through these, I guess the word is trying times, I think will be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Gentlemen. This is the sign that has the sponsor right down here who helped us out. This will be hanging at the ballpark. And the date will be changed every year. Looks good. So if you're on here as a sponsor, you just signed up for an opinion, by the way. <laughs> yeah, they can be changed. I know. <laughs> and, if, and if any of you want to get on the bottom for a sponsor next year, we will gladly entertain your donation. Looks good, guys. That's good. That's good. Can we give a round of applause to Mr. Cook and Mr. Cobb? I'm going to wait till I sit down. <laughs> you guys want to just sit down and get it for a minute? No, no, no. Awesome whole meeting until we're done. <laughs> All right. Um, other business? Uh, real quick, I was going to ask you earlier, Mr. Bridge, did you get any glasses? I did. Oh, so. Makes me look smarter. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Keyword looks. Well, you know, you know. All right. Uh, anybody else? Any questions, comments? Mr. Mayor, motion to adjourn. Uh, Second. Uh, no. Is that right? No. Not you yet. guys got yeah. still things to do. Yeah. What do we have to do? I thought we were ready. No. You okay. want to take it? You want me to do it? I can. Do it. Um, I need a motion to accept the resignation of Ethan Reynolds. Oh, yeah. Do what? I need a motion to accept the resignation of so Mr. Reynolds. So moved. Second. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. I just drew a blank. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mayor Lowry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Years, <laughs> Mr. Shammy. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. Um, 
Do we need a motion to advertise for the open seat? That's coming next. Okay, hold on. We've already done I don't that. Know how to do that. The, oh, the. No, we have. We have made it. So they got to oh, announce a vacancy. So someone up here has a, a. At the next meeting, you guys have to announce the council vacancy. Make a motion to have you put it in the paper. Mm -hmm. Second. Is that how we want to do it? You just made the motion, didn't you? Okay. I'm just making sure. <laughs> for the open council seat. Yeah. Yes, to advertise for the open council seat for the empty council seat. What paper, please? It will be the Springfield News and Sun. All right. You were the. I made motion, Bill, second it. Okay. And. Um, I'm all lost now. Vice Mayor. No, it, it would be him. I second it. Oh, oh you did? Okay. I thought he did. I'm sorry. I second it. I'm lost now. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Chan. <laughs> Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. And can you just announce that we have an open vacant council seat in yes. the term ending? 2009, December 31st, 2019. Yes, so whoever uh, whoever council does, you know, appoint to fill the empty seat, it's going to be uh, interesting because if we appoint them, then, yes, they will be up for re-election at the end of this year, as will a couple of us. So, uh, okay. but, uh, if we would like to see some good candidates put in for that, it would be great. We appreciate it. But Ms. McKenzie just filled that empty seat, and now we got to fill that empty seat again. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm going to scoot. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's going to scoot. So. Any other Are you lost at, at the next meeting? <laughs> right. Or you can do it right now if you like. <laughs> Make it official. Anything else, Council? Yeah. Mr. Bridge? I'm good. Are you uh, sure? Miss. Uh, um, <laughs> Burner. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, <laughs> good. How do you get any questions or comments before we close it up? Mr. Mayor, right. move that adjourn. Second. Second. Yeah. Are we doing anything in the big cleanup? Yes. Are you talking about the trash cans and everything? Yeah. Or the trash yeah. in the community? Yeah. 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 29th. Yeah. It's, it, how we just uh, scheduled, I think it's the weekend after the garage sale. But don't quote me on that. Well, it's, it's, it's the 29th. It's the 29th. Oh, that's when it's.